Here we have some word problems that have to do with polygons. And this first one, it's a lot of words there, uh, and so maybe it looks complicated, but really it's not that complicated. A gardener has 660 meters of fencing, and she wants to enclose the most area that she can. And the thing to know about this is when you're trying to enclose the most area, a circle is the most efficient shape for that, way better than a square or some other kind of polygon. And actually, polygons get closer to circles the more sides they have. You could think of a circle as a polygon with infinitely many sides. So the closer you can get to a circle, the better. So that's what she's going to try to do here. But she has a few um, you know, rules about this. Not more than 15 sides. So that would be too many sides, too complicated to do more than 15. But not less than 5. And more is going to be better here. That's the, the key to solving this problem. And each side needs to be an even meter, so no point this or point that. And no more than two meters left over. She doesn't want to waste a lot of fence material. So those are the key uh, criteria she's got here. And my suggestion, rather than looking for some kind of big formula here, is just test the information they're giving us. We have four answer choices here. And we know that the more sides, the better. So if well, let's say we've got an octagon that's 8, a 13 gon, a 15 gon, and an 11 gon. So if the 15 gon works, satisfies all these other criteria, perfect. If, if it doesn't, we'll go to the 13 gon. So what I would say here, they're giving us the number of sides and the meters per side. We have to check that it doesn't exceed 660, right? Because then she wouldn't have enough to do that. So I would just take 15 times 44, and that's exactly 660. So the sides are an even meter. Um, it's got 15 sides, which is the most sides that we could have gone for here. And there's no fence left over, so that looks perfect. And that's going to be our right answer. I think we got lucky there choosing the first one. If we'd chosen B first, I would have multiplied 13 times 51. And I would have gotten 663. So she doesn't have enough fence for that one. So I think the easiest way to solve a problem like that is just to test the answer choices. All right, let's try the next one. This one says, in a conservationist's heptagonal sanctuary, so some sort of garden, maybe it's got a wall around it, and it's seven sides. When interior angles are put in increasing order, each differs from the next by 25. What that means is the first angle is some measure, we don't know, we'll call it x. The next angle up is x plus 25, and so on and so on for all seven sides. Then it says, find the measure of the smallest interior angle of the field to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, so we want to find x then. Uh, this is our smallest angle, that's our next biggest. What we're going to do here is add up all the angles and then use our formula for the sum of the angles of an inter uh, interior angles of a polygon. So let me list out all the angles first. So we've got, here's the first one, x. The second one is x plus 25. The next one is x plus 50. Then x plus 75, then x plus 100, then x plus 125, and then x plus 150. And is that 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is 7. So that's going to be the left side of our equation. On the right side, we're going to use that formula for the sum of the angles of uh, interior angles of a polygon. But let's clean this up first. It's, it's too long, too unwieldy this way. I want to combine the like terms, so I'm going to add up all my x's here. And that's easy enough to do. There are seven x's. And then I've got to add up all these numbers. So I think that comes out to 525. Might want to check my math on that one, but I think that's right. And now the formula for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is n minus 2, and n is the number of sides. Well, the number of sides, we know that's 7. So that's 7 minus 2 times 180. So that is 5 times 180, which is 900. So we'll put 900 over here. And over here, we've got 7x plus 525. Now we're going to subtract 525. And that means 7x equals 375. And then finally, we divide by 7 and we get x equals 53, and they told us the nearest tenth, so 53.6 degrees. All right, we've got one more here. This one might be a little tricky. 
It says, an after-school club was doing a craft with paper cut out in the shape of a convex regular polygon. Regular polygon means all the angles are the same. So that's useful to us. If one of the interior angles has a measure of 135 degrees, what is the name of the polygon? Well, when you're looking for the name of a polygon, you really want the number of sides. And we have a formula that deals with number of sides. We just used it up here. It's the number of sides minus 2 times 180 equals the sum of these um, angles. So equals 135. Well, that would be one of them. So how many, what's the sum? Well, it's going to be times the number of, uh, sorry, not sides, angles, times the number of angles that there are. Num same number of sides as angles. So that would be 135 times n. So now we've just got to solve this for n. Well, uh, I'll multiply my 180 through the, the parentheses here. I've got 180n minus 360 equals 135n. I would, uh, let's see, add 360. And then I would subtract 135n. And we'd end up, let me move over here a little bit, we'd end up with 40... Uh, 45n equals 45n equals 360, and then we divide by 45, and I think you're going to get n equals 8. So the name of this is an octagon, an eight-sided polygon. So that's a little bit of work with word problems with polygons.